Hi, I'm Tim. I am the Tinkering Turtle. This video I want to go over repairing punctures in your tires. We went out the other night and got a puncture in my wife's rear tire. It is the third puncture we've had and yes we do have tannis liners in the bike. I don't know how many punctures it has resisted but I have had three in this bike. All in the rear tire. And what I think happens is the front tire kicks up the stick. In this case it was a two inch long stick. It was about a quarter inch in diameter, maybe a little bit more, and it had a blunt end. So I can't figure out why it would go through the rear tire. But I think the front tire kicks it up and then it gets wedged against the ground at an angle that the back tire just can't resist. And they make these fat tires a little thinner to reduce the weight of the tires. And I think that allows for these objects to get push, punched through the tire. So we use Tannis liners to help eliminate that issue, but I think at the end of the day, you end up getting puncture. So I'm gonna take the rear wheel off the Hemiway. I'm gonna repair the two punctures I have already, plus the one in this tire, and then I'm gonna put new tires on the bike. And I got these, and they're very similar to the Supercell 8, but I got them from China. I will put the name of the tire down below and I'll actually put a link to the tires on AliExpress in the description of the video. Now I don't make any money off the AliExpress link but I just want you guys to have it. The reason I chose these tires over the tires from Super 8 is the Super 8 ones were like $110 a piece when I bought these and these are $65. So there's a big difference in cost so I want to see how these do and how they hold up. I'm going to more of a street tire over a knobby because we don't ride on dirt very much or sand and I think these will be plenty grippy enough but I want to see the difference in rolling resistance from the knobbies to the um, slicker tires. In addition to that my wife has almost 4,000 miles on this bike 3,500 or a little bit more and it's time to change the tires out. So I'm going to take these tires off, I'm going to remove the tube from the back repair it and then put two new tires on um, when I put it back together. I won't be showing the removal of the rear tire because I've done a video on that for the cruiser and the step through is the same process exactly. I will link that video for the tire removal in the description of the video um, so you can look at that if you need to but mostly I'm just going to show the repair of the tires and then putting the new tires on, repair the tubes and putting the new tires on. So let's get to it. As always, here are the tools I use. I have a adjustable wrench, metric Allen wrenches. I have some tire levers, I think they're called. I call them tire irons, but they help break the, the beads off of the rims. I've got a park tool patch kit and a little piece of sandpaper to rub up, rub, or rough up the rubber. Say that 10 times fast. I also have a couple tubes here that I have had punctures in the past. I'll be repairing these along with the tube out of the Hemiway. And here are the two tires that will be going back on the step through. <laughs> Okay, I've got the wheel off the bike and I need to get as much air pressure out of the tube as possible. I don't think there's much in there so it shouldn't take very long. I've got my tire levers here and they just kind of push together. They've got a scooped end and a hook end. I usually end up using the scoop end. I'm not sure what the hook end does. I think that's for running around the rim and peeling it off so I might try that but most of the time you just need something under there to get it to pop off. So I can't find my core, my stem core remover, so I'm just gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver and push the valve down. 
and I'm not getting any air coming out so I think that's done. Now the way you start this is you push the bead down away from the rim all the way around. Hook your tire lever up that way you get the tire started. You put your second one in and then you just peel it down and around. Again keeping this down away from the rim keeps it in the center and allows more flexibility for the bead to pop off so it's not quite as hard. These are plastic so they don't tear up the paint on your rim which is nice. I will have a link to these in the description of the video. Now I've got the first bead off that was very easy. I'm going to try to get the tube and the liner out. And I'm just lifting the tire and working it out as I go. So you can see these are well used liners. Here's the hole that went through for that stick. That's a pretty big hole. Pretty obvious that's where it was. I'm going to set this aside. I will put it back in the new tire because I do think it gives you maybe an eighth of an inch protection um, from anything protruding through the tires and I still think that's a good idea but uh, it is what it is. You set the, or the rubber over there for the repair. You can see this tube has already been repaired once. Now I'm going to complete taking off the tire from the rim. And it's just a matter of typically popping it off. And I'm going to set the rim aside for now until I can get the uh, patches done on the tubes. One thing about setting or working with the rims is don't set it on the wire side on your table because you can hurt the wires. I always set it on the brake rotor side. That way I'm not going to take the chance of doing any damage while I'm doing the work. Now the neat part about the Park Tool patch kit is it has instructions right in here um, how to do the patching on the rubber. It says to lightly buff the area to be patched using the sandpaper they include or the sandpaper I have. Spread a thin layer of glue around the hole larger than the patch and allow it to dry. So this is more like a contact glue where it kind of gets to the tacky point before you put the patch on. And then peel off the backing of the patch, press it firmly onto the tube. So basically you rough up the rubber, put the glue on the tube, and then allow it to dry and get tacky. Once it's tacky then you'll pick the patch you want and I've got, it comes with several different size and shape patches. Peel off the backing and put it on there and press it firmly on so it seals onto the tube. And this patch that I did, I did this well over a year ago, almost a year and a half ago, and it has held up perfectly and I've never had an issue with it. Again, I just got a new puncture so I have to deal with that. So now I'm gonna have to go around the tube and find the hole. And here it is, I found it right there. I'm gonna take a clean part of my towel here I don't want to rub grease or anything on here, so I make sure I'm using a clean part of a towel. Where was that? Nice and clean. You'll note that the hole here is between the seams. If you get a hole right on a seam, the chances of you getting that patch properly goes down considerably because the seam, unless you sand the seam completely off, um, the patch may have a slight gap around the seams and allow air in and out. Since it's in the center here, I shouldn't have any issue at all with getting the patch to adhere and seal up that hole. So I'm going to take my sandpaper, rough it up. And obviously rough up an area considerably larger than your patch. It's got a rougher piece of sandpaper, so I'm going to go over that with that real quick. And I do a little cross patching where I go this direction, then this direction, then this direction, just to get it good and rough. Again, wipe off any dust. I'm going to decide what patch to use. I think I'm going to use the round one. 
this size here should be more than big enough uh oh well it appears since I've used this a year and a half ago the glue in it has dried up or gone away so that's not going to be any good to me so I've got a problem I need to stop the recording right now, jump in the truck, run down to the bike store and see if they've got any patch glue that I can use for the repair. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I got a couple of patch kits. I want to give a big shout out to Cross Country Cy or Cycle here in Holland, Michigan. If you're in the Holland, Michigan area and you want good service, go to Cross Country Cycle. They have accommodated all my needs even on electric bikes that I didn't buy from them or they don't care. You need help, they'll help you. And I love that about that place. I went to a bike shop that honestly is closer to me than them. And that bike shop gave me a bunch of attitude. They didn't, they wouldn't work on one of my bikes because they didn't sell it to me, which I thought was unbelievably ridiculous. And honestly, I don't even bother with that bike shop anymore. I go right past them twice as far to cross country cycle and I use them. So big shout out to them, not sponsored. They don't pay me. They don't give me free stuff. I just think it's a good business and we should support good businesses. I also think an important lesson to take from this is that once these tubes of glue are opened, um, their li shelf life is virtually nothing. So if you're out on the road and get a flat and you fix it with your patch kit, probably go online and buy another patch kit and put it back in your bag because the glue is likely not going to be available to you next time you go to do the work and that could be a big problem if you're out on the road. So the patch kits are cheap. I think for these at the store I paid four bucks. They're not, they're not expensive. Keep one or two around, put them in your bags just in case you do have an issue out on the road or in my case you're doing the work at home and you don't got any glue to do it with. So the glue you need to put a hole in the end. Now I'm just using a screw, but the cap has a little pointy um, plastic piece that you can push down into. So if you're out on the road and you don't have something sharp, the cap always has a sharp thing. You just push it on, it'll do the work. So I'm gonna spread a liberal amount of glue on the tube, definitely making sure that it's bigger than the size of my patch. Spread it out nice and evenly. So I've got that compared to the size of the patch here. It's bigger. Now I will let that dry until it's almost completely dry or tacky. But while that dries, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna patch some other tubes. Now on these tubes, I circled with a black marker where the holes were so that I wouldn't have to look for them for a very long time when I went back to do this. And it is the same process, just clean the tube off, sand it, put the glue on to let it dry. I'm going to lay that there and let that dry. Now, this is pretty much dry. And that was very quick, that was maybe a minute. I'm going to peel the aluminum off the back of the patch. Try not to touch the business side of the surface. And then place the patch and press it firmly onto the tube. It makes a chemical bond, so basically the patch and the rubber are vulcanizing together, I think is what they call it. So they're basically, the, there's a chemical melting process, if you will. I don't think that's probably an accurate term, so please don't hold me to it. But just want to keep good pressure on it while it cures. And the patch is firmly adhered to the tube. Now I'm going to set that aside 
until I get the other tubes patched. Now obviously if you're out on the road you won't have a towel or something, just use your shirt just to get the extra rubber off. Don't rub glue on your shirt of course, but just get the rubber that you're, you're removing from the tire or scuffing up. I don't like to have that extra rubber inside that patch. Apply the patch. Good pressure on it for a couple of minutes or for a minute or so, 30 seconds anyway. Let that chemical bond happen. Now when I do this, I'm not so worried about the plastic that goes over the top. You can, I think, I just leave it on. I think you might be able to peel it off, I'm not sure. I'm more worried about the orange and black area being pressed down firmly and getting a good bond. Tube number two patched. I like keeping pressure on the patches for as long as I can until it cure what I consider cures. Just you just want a good chemical bond between the patch and the tube. So uh, these two tubes are going to go downstairs and they're extras in case I ever have an issue again. I don't usually carry a tube with me on a bike. I usually carry a patch kit or in this case I'll carry a couple patch kits just in case I get in trouble out on the road. Most of the time I try to bring the bikes back here so I can do the work here. And then if I don't want to patch every single time, I can just take one of these tubes and swap it out. I've got a 20 inch and a 26 inch. So I, all my bikes are those two sizes for the fat tires. So it's really simple to have an extra. I just hang it down in the basement with all my other bike parts and stuff and tools. And that way, when I have a flat, I can fix it. So let's get back to putting the tube and the tire and everything back on the Hemiway. Okay, to reassemble the wheel, I have my tire levers or tire irons, they're plastic. I have some Gold Bond baby powder, body powder in this case. And what I do for this is I use that to put the Tannis liner inside the rubber. I'll put a coat of baby powder inside the wheel. That way the Tannis liner can slide in and kind of get situated with having, in, without having any folds or kinks. And then I'll put the rubber inside the uh, inside the tennis liner, of course. So whenever you're putting a wheel on a bike, you want to check inside and make sure there's no dust or debris or issues. Also, in most cases, on most bikes, especially with the knobby tires, there'll be a pattern in the tire that shows you which direction is forward and which direction is back. On these, I'm not seeing that, nor am I seeing any kind of an arrow that tells me what direction they want it going for these Chow Yang um, 26 by four wheel or tires. The way I like to do this is I like to get the first bead on before I put the liner in. Before I do that, let's uh, put the baby powder in or body powder. And this just gives the rubber a little, it takes some of the grippy off the rubber and allows you to move the tannis liner around in there without it gripping to the rubber. It just makes it a little easier to install. I'm going to put the first bead on, just kind of press it around and that went right on. Now I'm going to take the tannis liner lifting up the tire, putting it in. Be sure when you put it in, you can see it's got folds in it as you press it in. Once it's in, make sure those folds flatten out because you don't want to fold inside the tire. That will cause problems. So I just rub my hand until I find a problem and then I tug and pull and get it flattened out so that it's flat all the way around. I'll wipe off any dirt you can get off the tire or the tube. 
I'm going to orient the wheel so the hole for the stem is down here. I'm going to remove the stem cap and set it aside. Now this is the hard part. I've got to get the tube inside the wheel and get the stem coming out that hole. That's kind of difficult with these tannis liners because the flap tends to go over the hole. So you got to kind of press it down. So it may take a little work to get that lined up. Be patient. Take your time. You'll get it in. Again, lifting the wheel or the tire a little bit. Pressing down the liner to get my stem lined up. Oh, that went in pretty good. Now that I've got my stem coming up out of the wheel, I'm going to put my cap back on. And the reason I do that is that'll stop the stem from going back down inside the rim. Now I'm just going to work my way around the wheel, putting the tube in with the same, the same um, focus as I had with the liner is you don't want kinks or folds in your tube when you're putting it in the wheel. You definitely don't want it folded because if you get a fold inside the tube and you fill it up, that's a weak spot and it can actually cause a tear or a rip or give you another flat. Now I've got the tube in, but I'm going to go around and double check for any kind of folds or creases. Make sure it looks like it's sitting in there properly. Now I want to show you what happens when you don't put the tube in properly you'll get these folds and creases in the tube. And this was likely done um, during the assembly process at Hemiway. So you'll get these creases and those are bad for the tube. I'm kind of glad I took this tube out now so I could make sure that these folds and creases weren't put back in. I'm surprised that this didn't have a failure before now because of these creases. But when you're putting it in, that's the importance of getting it put in properly so that you don't end up with these folds and creases. And there's a lot of them here. So they didn't take the time at the plant to put this tube in. And they had these creases, which could have caused a failure, unfortunately. So when you're putting the tube in the wheel, make sure you don't have any kinks or folds because this is what happens and it causes failures. Okay. So that's done. Now the next step is only if you have tannis liners. What you want to do is take this flap, put it inside the rim and fold it under the tube. So you basically are encapsulating completely around the tube. That way you won't have problems with the liner causing any kind of kinks or issues. And just again, take your time and do this right the first time and you won't have a bunch of issues down the road. I do have a Tannis liner video. I will put in the description of the video as, or this video as well. So if you want to see the installation of the Tannis liners originally, you can see that. Some people use Tannis liners like me. Other people, there's a couple different options to use. Um, use your best judgment on which one you want to try. I haven't ever used slime or flat, or I think it's called flat out. Um, but those, are, from what I hear, not so much the slime, but the, the flat out is a really good product. And the difference is when you put slime in a tube, it, after two years, you need to replace the tube. Flat out lasts for like 10 years. And from what I understand, it's a better product. So take that for what it's worth. I've never used either. Okay, I've got the tube in. I've got the tennis liners wrapped underneath it. Everything's good. Now I just need to put the last bead in and put a little air in it. So you'll reverse the process. You'll take your tire lever. You'll put the bead down so it's inside the rim. Put the second one in and you'll just run it around. And pop it on. And it's sometimes as easy as that, sometimes a little tougher. Okay, and now I make sure my stem is coming up straight out of the tire and I manipulate it if it's not. I don't want the stem coming out at an extreme angle. That's not good for the tube or the tire. I'll remove the cap and I'll put on my, whatever you're gonna inflate with. Here I've got my compressor. If you're out on the road, you're gonna have a pump. Now I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure in here, maybe three, four pounds. 
Now the reason I don't put a lot of pressure on here is I want to be able to manipulate the, wheel, the tire on the rim. Because what you're going to see is there's a small flashing that goes around the rim. Sometimes it dives in close to the rim, sometimes it's away from the rim. What you want to do is go around both sides of the wheel, both this side and this side, and make sure that flashing, and if you don't know what flashing is, it's just a little bead of rubber from where the molds came together. You want to make sure that's even around each side in comparison to the rim on both sides. That way when you're, a lot of people I hear, they put their wheels on their bikes and they go for a ride and they'll get a, a bounce or a thump and that's because that bead wasn't set evenly around both sides of the rim. So then they have to take the wheel back off, deflate it, they have to work the rubber to get that even all the way around and put it back on the bike. So just do it the first time. Again, some of this stuff, just take your time and do it right the first time. It'll save you a lot of agony down the road. Once you get it to a place you're happy, bring it up to about 5-10 pounds and then double check that one more time. That looks good. Now this new rubber says max inflate to 20 PSI. I typically run, as I've said in many videos, 25. But since the tire says that, I'm gonna just go to 20 and see what it's like and then make adjustments from there. And that is the new tire on my Hemiway rim that gives you more of a street knobby list. Hopefully that'll, I mean the, the noise on these bikes are not bad to begin with, but I'm hoping this reduces that a little bit. Hope it reduces rolling resistance so that I can get a little better mileage or range on the bike. That's another thing I'm hoping for. Now I'm gonna take a second here and kind of clean up the rim best I can while it's off the bike and then I'll reassemble it to the bike. So what I'm doing here is I'm spinning the wheel and I'm watching the rubber to make sure there's no big bumps and I'm making sure I got good side to side clearance. And then I'll tighten it down, tighten the axle down into the frame, into the dropouts. The only thing left to do is to put together the motor connector. Now, I want to talk about this because so many times I've gotten questions and concerns about this motor connector where their motor is stuttering or there's having a problem and nine times out of ten it's this connector because it wasn't put together correctly or they, they put the wheel back on and the motor won't work right and that's because then they pushed it together it was turned on these connectors there are arrows on both sides line those arrows up and push them straight together and make sure you push it all the way together it's got to be fully seated that is so important that i can't even express it enough that way you won't have issues going down as you go forward see here's the arrow right here and the arrow right there they're lined up now I'm really pushing these together because you want them fully seated. You don't want to have electrical connection where they're just barely touching and they start, for lack of a better term, arcing or not getting a consistent um, contact. You want to make sure these are pushed all the way together and that way when you check the bike you'll know if it's working correctly or not. And once you have the connection done here, you don't want this wire flopping around. So you're gonna take a zip tie, and I strongly encourage anybody that has a bike to have zip ties in their shop or in their garage. You put a zip tie on. You'll zip tie that wire down 
so that it doesn't move back and forth and hit the wheel or whatever. Even though the front wheel has no issues like the back wheel did with the flat, I do want to change the rubber on this bike. Now the front wheel does have pretty good rubber. Since I'm changing the tire on the back, I want to change the tire on the front as well. Plus it gives me an opportunity to clean up the tire, put new rubber on, and basically get the bike consistent set up. So I'm going to just fast forward this part. You've already gone through the step by step. You don't need to do it again. But I'm going to pull this wheel off, change out the rubber. The tube's fine. The liner's fine. I'll just do that real quickly on the bench. I'll put it on here. And then I'm going to take the bike out for a ride to make sure that I don't get any jiggling or bouncing. Because if I put it to get back together and my wife doesn't like it, I'll be pulling it back apart and doing it again, obviously because we keep our wives happy. So if you've made it to this part of the video, awesome. If you have questions or more importantly, you've seen me do something incorrectly, please comment below. It helps everybody that watches these videos get more information if they go through the comments and find any suggestions. If you have questions about what I've done and you want more clarification, leave a comment. And other than that, maybe give me a click or a like or a subscribe even. I love when my subscribe count goes up, and I will catch you next time. Stay tuned. Like I said, I'm going to do a little fast forward of me swapping out this rubber. I don't think I'm going to film going for the initial ride because that's kind of tough getting a camera set up and watch, but uh, we're going to get finished with this video here real quick. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.